They can do this too. You just forgot about them. It is, it's freezing outside. Tim, can you just bring the chair over? Thank you. Here, Frankie, come on. I'm Ray, directing. Pleased to meet you. Storm. The people who get cast as Juliet tend to be from within quite a narrow band of uh, kind of perceived femininity. You're going to go right. Yeah. Is it alright if I direct it to you? Please do. Okay, perfect. I've noticed the mask of night is on my face. I was sort of made in flush for paint my cheek, but what the hell spoke tonight? There are lots of people out there who would love the chance to play Juliet, but with the industry as it currently is, they are almost certainly not going to get cast, certainly not within the mainstream theatre anyway. Uh, what speech do you have for us? For I all? have Cressida from Toilets and Cressida. Marvellous. Oh, nice. My thoughts are like unbridled children, grown too headstrong for their mother. So let's go. Yeah, just go for it. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Against self-slaughter there is a prohibition so divine that cravens my weak hand. You do wrong your hand too much. Which manly devotion shows in this? Wouldst thou have that? Wish thou esteemed the ornament of life? Do you not give me thanks? Are you not proud? Do you not count yourself blessed? Thus much for law or kindred. I shall do it. And this night, or, or tomorrow, he shall love me. The reason that I cast multiple Juliets was because I wanted to cover a wide range of kind of impairments slash differences. So I wanted to cover size, I wanted to cover ethnicity, I wanted to cover weight, I wanted to cover height, I wanted to cover, I wanted to cover disability as well. But that wasn't the focus point of it. The focus point of it was diversity. Live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat of the adage. Nice, cool. The ability to just lay yourself bare and be completely honest, which is what great actors do, they are showing themselves to you in a way that is very vulnerable. Mainly the thing with them is, you know, regardless of sort of size or shape or disability, they have the right energy for Julia, that kind of, you know, part innocent, but part kind of sparky so sort of feel to it. Yeah. So that's what I think about her. And then Eleanor is just, I mean, she's, she, I just think she's a fascinating person. Yeah. Again, I don't see why there's nothing about her that couldn't be Juliet. I can work with the deaf person, I can work with the small person, I can work with the fat person, I can work... You know, it, that's not the important thing. The important thing is, can they do the job? Cool. Good morning. Do you want to come and sit at the table? All the scenes that we do from Romeo and Juliet are the ones that Juliet's in. So we tell the arc of her story, so anyone coming who, for example, doesn't know Romeo and Juliet should still understand her full trajectory. And then interspersed with the scenes, the actors talk about their experiences that maybe mirror some of what Juliet's going through. But Baden theatre is a style of theatre that uses stories from your own life to influence the structure of the play. And if you want to do a show that makes people listen, you need to look at these people's lives and you need to see where, like, what they want to say to the world in this show. There are 10 sort of, sort of clips from, from the play that we're doing. And then um, there'll obviously be the verbatim bits intertwined, which is what we're going to work out today. Yeah. 
Any stories that anyone wants to sort of shove my way, and then I will start asking you questions if, if there's nothing. But is there, is there anything that anyone thinks, yeah, this could be good? Yeah, I was out and about for my boyfriend's birthday and I uh, went to go see an American band. And some woman at the end, she's taking a photo of this lead singer. She was like, take a photo, but look at me, I'm looking like a dwarf. And then looked at me and went, ha ha ha, that's funny, and pointed. And I went, no, excuse me, that's really rude. And I saw her cry afterwards and I thought, well, you know, you have okay. to learn that this, that's not okay. And I'm not gonna to stand there and accept that you've just mocked me in a huge crowd of people. Like, because of the strength that I had to stick up for myself. That now is something that's going to stay with me for a while. And I think that's something that I would like to bring, maybe to make it as well, a bit of a feisty Juliet as well. I've only got three pictures of me without my hair online. Like, they're the only pictures you'll find. And it was only last year that I put one up for the first time. How did you feel differently? Because obviously you were older when something happened to you that society would perceive as being different, whereas everyone else was kind of like pretty much born or grew into. From that point of view, you're the only person who's got like a sense of what it feels like to maybe be considered normal and then have a sense of difference. I don't know, I think for me, it was constantly being alert and having this secret, feeling ashamed, feeling ugly. It's like that thing where I take my wig off the first time in front of somebody. It's a very big thing for me. And I feel like, I hate to say, but I do feel like my friends have to earn it because I don't want to be friends with people that can't handle it because it is me. Juliet's a lot more clever and a lot more conniving than I think we give her credit for. And um, if you take away the fact that she's, you know, supposed to be 14, and you just look at her as a woman, say, then she has taken control. She's fearless. If you could change the thing about you that makes you considered less normal in the world, then would you change it? No way. Never. So, OK, so let No me... way. There are times when I want to look less CP. Like, I think I can hear it in my voice. And I think sometimes in the way my hands move and stuff. I don't sometimes like that, but... I enjoy being in a wheelchair and enjoy being who I am. So, I wouldn't change it. The amount of stories that we've had today from people, comments, just walking down the street, and you're commented on. It's like, how would you like it if every time you walked down the street, you knew there was a relatively high percentage chance someone was going to go, oh, my God, there's a white man. And, it, and you know that it's derogatory. Do you know what I mean? Or that they think it's funny. Or even just they think it's worth commenting on. But to know that that's what happens to people every day. This is just their life. First time I went to get my pill, morning after pill, I was asked, the first thing I was asked was, were you raped? That was the first thing I was asked. Before, like, how are you? No, literally the first time. It was also the first time I ever had sex in my life. I went to my university pharmacy and I said, can I have the morning after pill? And the first thing the woman said was, did someone rape you? You're made to feel physically uncomfortable if you have an intimate relationship with someone. Because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to do that. That's not your privilege, it's someone else's. The first thing I noticed was a monster set of wheels. And I thought, now I can get around town in style. The third time we met with something, I jumped on the back and started like driving around. And you kept saying no, stop. You were like laughing hysterically at the same time. Juliet being in a wheelchair is completely irrelevant. The most important thing about playing a character, if you're an actor, is how she feels. Does that love me? I know that will say I and I will take that word, yet if that was worse, that may be false. 
should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overhearst that I was where my true love's passion, therefore pardon me and not impute this yielding. People are open-minded if you confront them with it. As soon as you put this Juliet in front of someone, their difference becomes irrelevant. Okay, and here we go, we're gonna do it quick. Okay, lads! Ladies! Lads! 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 Fuck off! Lads! Fuck off! Lads! Fuck off! Ladies! Fuck off! No! Much of grief shows shows still some want of wit. Yeah. Let me weep for feeling such a loss. Not the friend. <laughs> to wreak the love I bore my cousin upon his body that I slaughtered him. That same villain Romeo. What? Which you weep for? A lot of the exercise is, is just about getting people exhausted or getting people to use the language more because it's quite muscular. The language you've got to get your your tongue around it in a way that. We don't speak like that nowadays. The Count of Paris at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. Oh. See our news indeed. How? How will you none? Get to her. Get to her. Get, no, Eleanor. Not? You're no, Eleanor. El oh, okay. Oh. <coughs> wow. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. Obviously, I'm I'm never going to be cast as Juliet again. Like that's not a part for me, says the stereotypical world. And so to have the chance to bring something so different to her, that's so credible. Indeed, I shall never be satisfied until I behold Romeo dead. Obviously, every audition you go to, you want the job. But when it's a project where it sits in your heart, like, it's a bit more like, oh, I want this. Like, I want to be involved in this project. What I would bring to Juliet is the thought of, like, that human is enough. We're all built on differences that don't make sense. She's impulsive, but she plans everything. She's sweet, but she's dangerous. She's naive, but she is completely in control. She's fearless, but full of fear. And that's what humans are. We're not one thing, we're not the other. And that's what I want to bring to her, that sense of, like, that human is enough. It's just not yet near day. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, the nightingale. Night's candles are burnt out and jocund day stands tiptoe in the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. I'll say, yon grey is not the morning's eye. It is but the power reflex of Cynthia's brow, nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. It is the lark that seems so out of tune, straining harsh discord and unpleasing sharps. Okay, so what we're going to do 
is if you push hard enough on this with any part of your body, right, you can push with your back, with your bum, with your head, with your arms. If, right, if you push hard enough, it will, you will move it. OK, so you just have to believe that and keep pushing as you go through your whole scene. I've never really studied Shakespeare. Never thought it was something that I'd ever be able to be involved in. See how she puts her cheek upon her hand. Oh, there are a glove upon the hand. Why am I touch that cheek? I mean... She speaks! Oh, I'll speak again, bright angel. It is but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? Uh, is... Romeo, Romeo, where oh, are they? Oh, shit, I would skip That's right there, didn't I? <laughs> I'm flashing in my bum, I'm sorry. Oh, we love it. <laughs> I can grow so much from this as an actress. I can really take on new aspects I've never had the opportunity to do alongside doing Shakespeare. Yes, cool, very nice. <laughs> so there's lots of energy, because if you think about it, because it is, I mean, you are in danger of your life, which is part of it as well, which is part of like the fun of it. But I mean, genuinely, I mean, they, they have killed each other. I mean, the Tybalt's and the, and, and the Capulets and the Montagues have killed each other. You're then really worried about him as well. Then you've got the excitement of the party. You've got the excitement of your first kiss. Certainly your first kiss, maybe your first kiss, no. probably not. Cool, should we give it another go? Yeah, I'm gonna have a mass of water. Yes, absolutely. This for me is like a massive, massive learning curve. So obviously Shakespeare is very precise and you know, written for what it's written for. Um, Juliet isn't written for a little person. It's going to be the first thing, really, that you've seen me in. Yeah, since Panto. Yeah. Really? That was more... That was when it was all pretty green as well, wasn't it? I'm going to have to flirt with Romeo, babe. Do it. I'm sorry. Feel your boots, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in a chill before we go. My legs are aching. Why? Right. Yeah. Been on your feet all day? No, I think it was just from being where I was sat down. Shock to the system. Funky. <laughs> You know, as people would meet somebody in a nightclub and stuff like that, you'd kind of wonder if it ever was genuine, if they've got an alternative motive, if they're thinking, oh, are they doing it, get the little person as a dare. That horrible side. So I did have quite a close wall with allowing people in. I was like, I don't need a boyfriend, don't need one, I'm fine, don't want one, mm, nope. And obviously I'd met Paul and then it just changed. It all just went, actually. I do. I do want to be with you. God forbid, where's this girl? What Juliet? How now? Who calls? Your mother? Madam, I'm here. What is your will? This is the matter. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honour that I dream not of. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Speak briefly, can you like of Paris's love? I'll look to like if looking like him move. But no more deep will I endarp mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. So for one of the things for you is the specificities of small people, like people being like, yes, but they need to have a big head, or da da da. The, the thing that small people are always feisty, and the, the story you told about the woman who said you were like a dwarf, Oh no, she said she was like a dwarf and then you were like, fuck off. Someone will have a line somewhere about the fetishism of difference. Uh, Tash will talk about being fat. Uh, the thing about midgets. I looked that up. Yeah. yeah. That there's not just the obvious difference, there's also physical and emotional pains that go with the differences that people have. So something about that, I don't know who will say that yet, but someone... Megan from the side looked like a hunchback. <laughs> 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 Lara, don't tend to say anything because never be quite 100% sure you've lip read right and that you'll always find deaf people in the kitchen. Romantic expectations for people. Sex, generally, with you. Always. 
And the main thing is just don't let them sound self-pitying in any way. It's all about, it's matter of, so that the stuff that, when it will touch people is if it's just done in a really matter of fact way. And then obviously some stuff is just funny. And that's like, we'll just like play that up and be like, yeah, that's funny. This project has a lot to do with individuals as well as like the bigger picture. And it was really weird to just be talking about myself so openly and actually feel safe about it, like knowing that it was a safe space. It's exciting, it's really exciting. It's just... It hits a place, isn't it? Yeah. Totally. Like, yeah. I didn't get upset while we were talking about it the other day because I think it's just like, we had everyone there and it was kind of like funny, like, yeah. can't believe they can make you feel like that. And then when you think you're going to be in front of an audience bearing your soul, people just don't think about it when they say these things. And now, because of them, like, I've made it this far. Mm. I just like, it's just like, such like, I don't want it to come out as a fuck you because I want it to be positive. Mm. Like, it's not a fucking pity party, this show. No, it's no, like, no, it's no, like the complete all. reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Holy oh, ghost of time to dance. When I was 15, 16, I got diagnosed with depression, PTSD. That's kind of the time I started losing hair from my eyebrows. And then the first two months of sixth form was when, like, everything fell out. So I was juggling the feeling of having to hide it from every single person. It was hard, like, feeling like the bald one. And that's just not the image that I'd had for myself, like, growing up. Even though we all face very different challenges, all these women that I work with, they all have similar experiences and ideas of what it's like to feel like an outsider. This is the reality of our lives. This is what we go through. You know, it's a really good idea that Storm came up with. You get to see people playing Juliet, who you don't normally get to see, but then also, hopefully, people will take some things away from what the women say about their experiences, and hopefully it'll just make people think twice before they even think something, let alone say it, that it might actually just make them think again about people who appear sort of different from the norm. Who is this guy? Holy shit! He's a babe! Everyone there, who's there, who's there, and then bam. Take your time. It, it really is like the movies come on and everyone's rushing into the living room. As soon as that game is on, you're primed. You are ready to play cat and mouse with this man. The first day that I was in the rehearsal room without my hair on, it just like, felt really like liberating. But like I still got some things to work on for me for that. In the sequence that I do with Romeo, like there's like with this like really sexy bit, and I just I still trying to feel sexy without my hair on, still trying to own that, and so that's something that like I'm trying to get through in these rehearsals. The limitation of roles that people like us get put up for don't reflect modern day society. I want to experience a sexually desirable role because I think people like me need to be seen in that way. That's you. Guys are cruel, girls are crueler. Girls do it in a way that they don't realise that they're being nasty, that they don't realise that they're having an effect on you. From a really early age, girls would refer to me as big rather than tall. And then laugh and sort of say, oh yeah, I didn't mean that, I didn't, you know, I just mean that you're, you're just, you're, you're quite big. This drunk girl came over to me and she she was making a point of saying how small she was and how tiny she was next to me. And then she took a photo with me. What annoyed me more about it 
was that I did it. And I think it does come from the thing of just apologising for not being what I think I should be. It comes down to a fundamental point that if you are a really tall woman, um, in my personal experience, you have to really tell yourself that you're a girl. You have to really, you know, if you've got you know, bigger hands and lankier limbs and you, you, you kind of have to constantly tell yourself every day that you are feminine and that you are a woman <laughs> and that you are this and that you may struggle to have people see you that way. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. Which mannerly devotion showing this? For saints have hands, which pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palm's kiss. Have not saints' lips and holy palmers too? I ones that they must use in prayer. And then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus, from my lips, by yours, my sin is purged. And have my lips the sin that they have to? Sin from thy lips, I trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. Thank you, Father My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen, unknown, and known. Too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. <laughs> ah, dear Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, sweeten with thy breath this neighbour air, and let rich in music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. You don't, don't hold her hands because then she can't talk. It looks a little bit like. <laughs> it's actually a bit easier for me to sign it because with voices, you got the tone, you got the pitch, you got effort there. And I'm always very nervous that I don't get the emotion in my voice. When it's a side language, I can be in it, I can row my body lap which is too egg row my face of pressure into it. Come, come, uh, come with me and we will make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporates two in one. It's lovely to work with actors who's Try to understand what it is I'm saying to them so that they can jump in the right moment rather than to go in, oh, she's very sign it, it's my light now, it's nice having that. This is the first time I ever done theatre have the most amazing life, but it's just something about going into a different place, just being that character, knowing what made that character tick and what made them happy, and it's a nice challenge to explore. Come on, Michael, good boy. Good boy. That's it. He's a more shy one, Oliver is. 
I have had some people who say, are you sure you want to go to that beer? It's hard enough for the mainstream actors, let alone actors that have something different about them. But I thought, if I don't try, I might regret it. Oh my god, hey? Hey, Tom! Good boy, Tom. Good boy, let me to go in there. I love animals because I can understand them. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm tired because that's when I test not to understand people. It's when I'm tired because I can't concentrate. But with animals, doesn't matter what mood I'm in, doesn't matter how tired I am, I understand them and they understand me back. Bring your hand over. At the moment, it's a lot of death rolls, but I want to break out of that. I want them to be able to look and then go, Hey, Ashley, why can't this character be deaf? Why do you need a character that's not different? Growing up, um, I didn't really have any deaf mole model that I could lock on to. I only had the adults that I knew personally. Me, it might only change the line of one child to show them, look, don't be ashamed of what makes you different. Then I'm happy. Uh, there's nothing left in there. Um, maybe there's something still on your lips. Mm, no, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, such a good kiss, or? The banks waves. I can do it virtually. <laughs> I know, you can feel it. Uh, uh, oh, a dagger. As soon as <laughs> it might be a line, what's the line just before you you knock yourself off? This is thy sheath. But what's the bit before that? Oh, happy dagger. This Thank is you. Oh, happy dagger. This, this is thy sheath. Bear rust and let me die. Let me die. So oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheath. Bear rust and let me die. I wanted to play Juliet, and the only way I could was by putting on a production like this. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the people hollow of thy knee. Frightened, I was here from the other day and now. So in a minute, there are many days. Else would a maiden blush to make my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain will I dwell on form, fain. Fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. It's quite scary and it's quite, you do feel very, very vulnerable. I particularly feel very vulnerable because obviously if I fall over, I can't get up. I just think, okay, you're in love with him. He's not going to let you fall over or look bad or feel awkward or your legs fall off or something. When you get off, Tim, get off this way and come here and talk like that. Oh, that's cool. That's good, isn't it? Will that, will that be gone? Did it not yet no day? Did it, it was the what's it? It was the lark. The hell of the morn, the nightingale. Yeah, both of you look and watch. With envious streaks to lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles. Burnt out in jocundes and tiptoe on the misty mountain. By yonder blessed moon, I swear the tips with silver, all these fruit tree tops. I swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, the monthly changes in our circle orb. What should I swear by? Do not swear at all. It is too rushed, too unadvised, too sudden, too life the lightning that has ceased to be, and one can say it lightens. Sweet good night. Oh, thought thou leave me so unsatisfied. What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? Exchange of thy last faithful vow for mine. When somebody who you've known, you've only known them for a week, but you've been getting to know them really well, suddenly gets up and does something that really takes your breath away. And you go, oh my God, like I didn't realise that, that you had that to give, or that's a part of you, or you were able to do that in whatever sense of that. It just instantly informs what you're going to do next. Meg. 
What have you got there? Um, it, yeah, whatever I'm writing has come across really fucking preachy. Go on then. Uh, I, very, I was born in the 90s, that was all about her and chic, skinny as hell, and run my wedding. Naughty's all about big boobs, and right now it's about less up top, more in the back, as long as you still have a size 8 waist and no cellulite. It will change again, there's no way of knowing if you'll be right, you can only know that 95% of us will be wrong. I think that's good. Mm. It's a bit preachy. Yeah, though. no, it's fine. I think we can have a bit that of preach is the in way, it. Then. I think it's good to have the odd bit of preach in it. And then at the end of that, love give me strength and strength shall help afford. Um, Meg, you're going to start off with, but. In one of our sessions, we were asked, would you like to change the thing that made you different? Nice. Lara, you're first. And you're, no, because I lose deaf culture. Mm, yeah. Want to be involved in conversation, but really everyone just needs to sign. Yeah, have you written that? Yeah. You've written it? You've written well, that book. That's very much what I was going to say. You said it. Whoever works. It's like you in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Storm, what have you written? Um, I'd quite like to run on sand, but no. I like being in a wheelchair. It gives me an edge. I want to say something about I want selective non-alopecia. So I don't want my um, hair back on my legs or my fanny or my armpits, but I want it back on my head and my face. So, do you want to so say like, nose down, I'm OK with having alopecia. So do you want to say, <laughs> fuck, fuck yeah, I want my hair back well on my head? And then just look at my food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to spell alopecia. How do you spell it? Uh, A L O P E C I A. Keep Tibalt company, and then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. My sweet mother, cast me not away. Delay this wedding by a month, a day. Um, fuck. Worst uh, <laughs> one they lie. Love goes towards love. A school is from their books, and love from love towards school. Yay! Thank you. Uh, so here goes. Farewell. All the Juliets die. Romeo on the tomb. Fucking finished it, mate. Well done, team. Thank you. Yes, there is a deeper message about society and meaning, but essentially also. We're just trying to act and perform and put on a play, and we don't want to be seen in any other way. That's the point. They're, they're here because they're all talented and they can all do it, so it's just, it's more about giving them the freedom to, to do what they can do anyway. If audiences thought, nah, can't see any of them as Juliet, doesn't work, that is a failure. Everyone. Welcome to the showcase of Redefine and Juliet. This show is a personal dream and ambition of mine to put on. It's the most powerful, important thing you'll see 
And it's right now and do that as you've never seen it before. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Can I go full with when my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center up. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father, refuse thy name. Or, if thou wilt not be besworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Catholic. My sweet mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage by a month, a week, or if you do not, make the bridal bed in that dim stone monument where Tybalt lies. And with this knife I'll help him presently. Be not so long to speak, I long to die. Oh, oh, daughter, I despise kind of hope. My first ever boyfriend broke up with me because he said I got too comfortable. I take off my eyebrows and eyelashes and the rest of my makeup in front of him and he said I just wasn't sexy unless I was done up properly. Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? <laughs> <laughs> Once I was in this bar and I accidentally fell over and knocked into this guy. I knocked his drink everywhere and he didn't mind but his girlfriend did. She looked at me, looked straight up, and shouted at me. Oh my God! I mean, I know you haven't been a woman for very long, but could you watch out for the door? Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheep. Bear rust and let me die. In one of our first sessions together, we asked the question, would you change the thing that makes you different? Hell yeah, I want my hair back. <laughs> From the nose up. <laughs> I would love to, you know, run along the beach. But actually, a quite like being in a wheelchair. Gives me an edge. <laughs> All you need is for the audience to get what it's about, and as soon as they got what it's about, they were really enjoying it. It felt like it was really current and really vibrant and really important. It's not really about us, it's about a much bigger thing. It's a long journey, and it's, we've done so much to get into this point. It's telling the story and it's telling the people's story and it's the people who can't get up on stage. We're telling their stories as well. Yeah, it's really personal and I feel really like naked right now, but we're doing it for a reason, aren't we? Women like us are not seen as desirable on screen or on the stage. Just because we don't fit that mould doesn't mean we can't do it. Why shouldn't we?